and welcome to 5 Minutes or Less of EMS. I'm your host, Kevin Mackey, the Fire Service Medical Director for Sacramento Regional Fire. Today's topic is spinal motion restriction policy. There's already a video out there about a question and answer session about spinal motion restriction. I refer you back to that, specific policy questions. But today I want to review parts of the policy specifically. So the policy comes in three sections, indications, procedure, and special notes. Talk about a couple of those real quick. Remember that in penetrating trauma, there is no role for spinal motion restriction anymore. Also for procedure, get questions about the KED. I want to reiterate that again. So the Kendrick's extrication device, or the KED, is equivalent to a long spine board. You can use one or the other, but you don't need to use both. So if you're going to need to use full motion restriction, including some sort of board, you can use the KED. And then finally, one note about patients over the age of 65, patients under the age of five. The policy says to consider SMR in those patients. It's just consider. You don't have to do it. I find that our elderly patients who fall are commonly the ones that we end up putting into SMR. Next, I want to spend a little time on the actual flowchart. It's page three of the policy. There's a lot of reasons to use SMR, fewer reasons not to use SMR, but the reasons to use it are specifically called out in the flowchart. Unreliable, that would be a person with Alzheimer's disease, someone you can't reliably get a history from. The one we all know about, intoxicated in drug use, they're not reliable historians, or they may be altered to a point that they can't give you a reliable examination. Uncooperative, a person who is so uncooperative that it takes you time to restrain them, to actually put them into spinal motion restriction. I don't want to have anybody fighting with somebody to put them into SMR. If you can't get somebody into SMR, document it in your pre-hospital care report, that's your greatest defense. So don't forget to do that. But if they are uncooperative, that would be a reason to use SMR. Language barriers, obviously, if you can't communicate with them to get a good history. Distracting injuries, I talked about that in the last video. Again, I refer you back to that one. Gross motor and sensory deficits or complaints. Very quick examination. Can you feel me touching your hands? Can you feel me touching your feet? Can you move your hands? Can you move your feet? That's all you need to do. Midline spine pain or tenderness. Want to bring Mr. Bones into the picture here. So. Along the midline, there are spinous processes. If you remember back to our anatomy class, the biggest one is C7, which is back at the base of the neck. This is palpating right in the midline. This is not paraspinal. This is right in the midline. Someone who has fractured their spine will have tenderness right over that vertebrae. That's the reason why. Think to a trauma center. The trauma surgeon rolls the patient on their side palpates down the middle of the spine and says, does this hurt, does this hurt, does this hurt? Same thing, right down the middle. Spine deformity, it's got to be pretty rare. Don't see it very often, but that is called out as well. And then limited cervical spine range. So this is the person who can't turn their head. It just hurts far too much to turn their head. Go ahead and use SMR on those folks as well. If all of those are no, you don't need to put them in SMR. Don't forget to document everything in your pre-hospital care report form. So that should wrap it up. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There will be lots more videos coming out. And I want to thank the hosts and bringing me to Station 72 today. And we'll see you on the next episode.